Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Boncast. Oh, yeah, Teching and Barry once again here today. And before we get into today's subject, I have a brief promotional message to get across. Do not worry, it is Bleach-related. Um, the Bleach anime. I don't know if you guys have heard of the Bleach anime. It's somewhat popular. Uh, anyway, everything involving the Bleach anime from the entire first generation, from episode one all the way up to, I think it was episode 366, was when the first genera uh, generation anime stopped, all the way now up to the Thousand Year of Blood War, or I should say the first core of the Thousand Year Blood Warwick is now available uh, digital to own over on iTunes as of January 31st. So today's February 1st, so it should be up there already. So I just wanted to do a little bit of promotion for that. If you would like to uh, download the Bleach episodes digital to own on your own device, uh, whether it be a computer or a tablet or a phone, or I guess those are all classified as computers, technically speaking, if you want to own the Bleach anime in digital format, go check out iTunes. That's basically the premise of this promotion. Premise promotion. All right. So anyway, with that all being said, now let's get into the topic. But first, I'm going to change up the lighting in here a little bit. What's a good bleach color? Um, actually, well, considering we're talking about the Thousand Year Blood Warwick, let's make everything pink. Oh, this is going to be fun. I don't actually, I've never made the entire office pink before. I don't know what that's going to look like. Give me a moment here. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I got to be honest. I gotta be honest, I kinda like this. I kinda like this. Alright, this is cool. Some of my lighting settings didn't have pink on there, so I just had to make do with what I had, but, uh, I think this looks pretty cool. This is my inner world now, okay. And since we're now entering the, I guess, well, eventually the second core of Bleach, we're gonna be discussing things about the second core of the Thousand Year Blood Warwick today. I also have to bust these things out. Oh, yes. Uh, did you know Ichigo got dual-bladed swords? I know, spoiler, right? It's crazy. Which one do you prefer? Um, do you prefer the giant trench knife or um, the more slender kind of blade that has the uh, the slot in the center of it? I don't know. I kind of just like the fact that Ichigo's just waving around a giant trench knife. I think this one is actually a lot bigger than the one that's actually in the anime. Because this thing is monstrous, okay? Well, anywho, um, we're going to be talking about the second core of Bleach today. Uh, specifically, there was an interview done with Kubo where he mentioned that there's going to be a fight in the second core that was not in the manga at all. And obviously this, got, this gets a lot of people hyped up because we all like fights in our Bleach. That's one of the high points of the entire manga. Now, when he says there's a fight in the anime that wasn't in the manga, I don't take that to mean something along the lines of, like, you know, like, like even the battles that Kenpachi had against those three Sternritter, you know, R, Q, and uh, uh, Y, the yourself. Those were expanded on a little bit in the anime. There were some other fights, like uh, Rukia's fight against Meninus McAllen, which we didn't get revealed in the manga at all. That was showcased a little bit more in the first core. However, no, this is going to be a fight, as in... I would say at least an episode because things are moving along at such a fast pace. Uh, we might even just get maybe more, but maybe I think a one episode guaranteed, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of theories going out there right now exactly what this fight's going to be. But I decided, you know what? We could probably just process of elimination this. All right, we could probably just go down the list of, like, what we know so far about the fights that occur in the manga. By the way, spoilers for the manga for upcoming episodes of the Bleach anime, in case you don't want to be spoilered. Uh, spoilered. Stop right now, please. Um, we could just go through all of the major fights and see who's missing or who wasn't present. Uh, now, with Core 2, I think, because there's supposed to be four cores total throughout the entirety of the final arc, okay? So, uh, from what I've had, like, discussions with people and what people are saying online, I think this core is going to stop right around uh, their entrance to the Soul Palace. So, probably, like, I think... I'm thinking this will be right before Yuha has the battles with the Zero Squad, okay? So maybe somewhere around the 590s is where this core is going to end, and then core 3 will pick up then, and maybe some more stuff will be added in core 4, because, you know, we're running out of cores here, and we're also running out of chapters, alright? Well, anyway, coming up here in core 2, we're going to go through all of the different captains and the lieutenants to see what they're doing in the manga, and to see if there's any wiggle room to have a uh, an extra fight in there, something we did not get to see in the, uh, in the manga itself, okay? So, uh, 
we'll just go down the line. Yamamoto and Chojuro are effectively dead. They're not going to be showing up. That's the extra fight. The extra fight is Yamamoto comes back from the dead, which could actually happen. Yuha could use um, his Bankai, Zanka no Tachi, that he stole from Yamamoto to bring Yamamoto and Chojuro maybe back as, like, you know, burnt fire zombies, and then they fight against, like, you know, like, like, Shunsui or Uketake or something. That, that could be good. Uh, doubt that that's going to happen, though. So, let's just go ahead with Shunsui as the, uh, new head captain of the Gotei 13. So, what does Shunsui do, uh, in this upcoming invasion in the manga? Well, uh, for the most part, nothing. <laughs> Shunsui just kinda chills out in the Squad 1 barracks. Hashwolf does arrive there, and then now shows up with her keto prowess, and develops a multi-layered uh, force field barrier kind of thing to prevent Hashwolf from entering. And when Hashwolf gets past the first barrier, it's like, yeah, well, suck it, because I got an even stronger barrier, right? So uh, that's pretty much where they were at the entire time. I don't really think this battle in question is going to focus on Shunsui too much. Something else you have to consider is the fights that are going to happen later on in the manga, further beyond Core 2, um, and Shunsui does get a really epic battle near the the end of the arc. So I don't think Shunsui or Nanao are going to be really involved in this fight. Moving on to Squad 2, and I can kind of knock out Squads 2, 7, and 10 here all in one go, because all of these captains all kind of fight a Stern Ritter to try to get their Bankai back, or they use a reclaimed Bankai in order to defeat those Stern Ritters. So in Squad 2, of course, we have Soyphone and Marechio Omida. Marechio actually gets a very decent amount of character development upcoming here in the manga. I don't know why. I don't know why Kubo specifically chose, you know what, Marechio. We haven't really focused on him all too much in the story. He's a little bit of a comic relief, kind of a blundering buffoon kind of character. I'm going to show people he isn't a buffoon, you know? He kind of, you know, it's actually interesting when you look at it like that. Like, Kubo kind of already did that in the fake Karakura Town arc when he kind of subverted a big trope where Marechio is this big guy, so he's obviously very slow, he's heavy, and so he flipped that on its head when he was fighting against against, um, uh, oh, who was the mammoth guy that he was one of, uh, you know, he was the one that I don't think was actually named in the manga. I think his name had to be revealed later, but he was the mammoth dude. And, uh, he was fighting against him, and he's just like, actually, I'm in the Special Forces. I'm in Patrol Corps. Do you think in the Stealth Corps, I would be that slow as the Lieutenant of Squad 2? Are you kidding? And so he revealed, um, you know, he had actually a decent amount of, like, you know, his Shunpo was pretty good there. And so we're kind of doing the same thing here. So Marechio and Soifon both fight against B BG9, Sternritter K. Um, I would like to know what the K stands for, because the letter K and the letter N were the two Sternritter letters we did not find out about in the, um, in the manga at all. So, on top of, uh, just learning about, uh, other than learning about BG9's letter, I don't think there's gonna be much more added to that fight. Um, so, Marechio and Soifo are gonna be fighting BG9. That was already in the manga. Uh, moving on to Squad 3, so, Rose, Rojoro, uh, Otorobashi, uh, fights against Maste Masculine. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, characters that are involved in that battle there. Uh, I believe even uh, Shuhei is involved in that fight. He kind of gets beaten down a little bit by Mask. And then there's Kensei that shows up and he fights against Maste Masculine alongside Rose. So they both use their Bankais and that's a really epic battle there. Um, Izuru... Uh, okay. Izuru is currently... He's not dead. Um, he is a zombie. Kind of. A uh, zombie cyborg, I guess. So, honestly, considering that Izuru doesn't show up in that state until the very end, it's like like 10 or so chapters before the Bleach manga ends is when Izuru finally shows up and is just like, yeah, I have a giant hole in my chest. Um, there was an extra bonus chapter that was released um, in between chapter like 520 and 521 where we actually got to see Mayori and Nemu like working on the lab table of, you know, like there's Izuru's body there and they're like modifying it and getting him to wake up and everything. In the uh, anime, when we got to see the scene where Akon was like hacking into the camera, uh, the 
uh, the camera that he planted in Mayori's office, it seemed to be something related to Ashisogi Jizo, which was Mayori's uh, Zanpakuto, of course, not relating to Izuru, but Izuru would definitely be one of their projects that they're working on at this point. He might be up and ready to go, and honestly, there's just like you could just do that a little bit earlier just so Izuru could have something to do. Um, I would actually really dig an Izuru fight just because it was something really hyped that we didn't get until the very end of the arc, and it was weird because we were already dealing with stuff like Yuha getting involved, the Miracle was doing stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, Izuru is here and he's back again. It's like, that's awesome, but we have so much other stuff to focus on right now. If you just want to have Izuru like, pop up off the operating table and be like, alright, time to do a test run, you know, and that would be great. I would love that. Uh, squad 4, so Unohana is dead now, of course, after her battle with Kenpachi Zaraki, passed on the title of, uh, you know, Kenpachi. So Isane is definitely somebody that we don't get to see a lot from. Uh, I would like to see her showcase off her Zanpakuto Itegumo a little bit more. I can't say I'm, like, super excited to be like, Whoa! Isane Kotetsu fight! Yeah! That's the battle! That's the battle right there! Kubo knows where it's at! Uh, I mean, I like Asane as much as the next guy, um, but, you know, like, she's still Asane. It would be cool to see what her Zanpakuto could do. But she spends most of the time healing throughout this battle. Um, her battle is with uh, Gwenael Lee, who is one of the creations of Gremmy, Sternritter V, that we're going to be introduced to. Tell you what, guys, I cannot wait for Gremmy's appearance in this series. It's gonna be fantastic. All right, Genpachi versus Gremmy. I mean, it's gonna be cool when that fight finally gets into the high points of that, but, oh, Gremmy, he was a, yeah, he was a fun character, right? Okay, so Isane was there with Yachiru, so she does even have stuff there, so I don't think we're gonna have an Isane fight. Um, going on to Squad 5, and this is the one that a lot of people wanted to focus on, was uh, Shinji Hirako. Now, Shinji Shinji did sort of get a fight coming up. He battles Bambietta very briefly and uh, kind of works alongside Komamura there. So Komamura is obviously using his, like, the sacred technique of the Beast Clan. And uh, he's the one that awakens his true Bankai and defeats Bambietta. However, Shinji was kind of also there to help out. But Shinji doesn't really get to do much in this entire arc. So I would argue at this, po at this moment, it'd be cool to see Izuru do some stuff. I think it would be cooler to see Shinji. Now, in the Can't Fear Your Own World light novel, uh, we do actually get to find out what his Bankai is, and Shinji's Bankai, it makes perfect sense why he didn't use it. It's the kind of Bankai that's not very beneficial for his allies, or rather, the optimal circumstances for how Shinji's Bankai can work is if Shinji is by himself, there's really none of his allies around, and he's facing off against a tremendous army of enemies. In those circumstances, that is when his Bankai can really shine. And it really just goes back to show how not every Bankai is just like Komamora's. Like, I'm gonna summon a giant just force of raw strength and Riatsu to just pummel my enemy into the dirt. Bankais can be very multifaceted, very complicated, uh, very distinct, okay? And Shinji's is in a way where it's like, okay, it essentially turns allies against one another. So if he used it while he had Momo next to him, if he had the rest of his Squad 5 next to him, it would just completely destroy them. It would have them fighting in the background. However, if Shinji was by himself, facing down against, like, a bunch of the Stern Ritters or a bunch of the Quincy's, and he was alone, his Bonkai I could, in theory, wipe out all of them, all right? Because they would just start fighting with each other while Shinji's also there fighting, okay? So, very impressive Bankai. It's just, it, you know, Kubo didn't really have a chance to showcase it off in the manga, okay? And just the ways that it was built up, okay? So, with that being the case, the circumstances be a certain way, and it might be kind of difficult in the battlefield. I'm not exactly sure what the range is on Shinji. I don't know if that was revealed. Let me know if it was. Uh, you know, exactly the exact range of which his Bankai affects everybody around him. Um, but it would be really cool to see a Shinji fight. It'd be cool to see a Momo fight. Honestly, Momo Hinamori, <laughs> I did a whole discussion video on each of the lieutenants, and Momo's video was basically summarized in this one sentence. Poor Momo. I don't even know if that's it. That is a complete sentence, but either it doesn't matter. Poor Momo. <laughs> I 
my god, she goes through so much crap in this story, so much psychological trauma, and and now here we are, it's been, you know, close to two years after the whole incident with Aizen, and she's finally kind of back up out of bed, being a lieutenant, working with Shinji. I'm sure, st I'm sure she still has a lot of baggage, and I hope to god they have a therapist in the Soul Society, but it would be cool to see Momo Hinamori finally fight with a level head, with not having to bear with a massive amount of trauma, you know, during the fight, like she did at uh, Fake Karakura, or when she saw Aizen's body and she snapped and she fought against Izuru. I mean, that was a badass scene, but she wasn't thinking very clearly. And that's the thing. Momo is a genius when it comes to Kido, and her Zanpakuto, Toba Yume, is a Kido-based Zanpakuto. If Momo is calm and level-headed and has time to prepare. Like, Momo with prep time is honestly terrifying, okay? So you give Momo, you know, prep time and enough time to go to therapy, and she could be extraordinarily devastating in a battle. She could be laying, like, fire landmine traps, kind of like what uh, Uohara was doing against Aizen. You know, she could be pulling that kind of shit off. So, honestly, yeah, Shinji and Momo, definitely. So, Byakuya is currently at the Soul Palace. He's healing. Renji is also in the Soul Palace right now, so they're not involved in the immediate uh, onslaught of the Stern Ritter's second invasion. Renji and Rukia will show up later, so that's their fight we see individually between Mask and uh, Rukia fights against Asnote. Um, moving on to Squad 7, we have Komamura, who of course fights Bambietta. Iba! Oh, maybe that'll be the fight. You know what? Can we just please get the name of Iba Zanpakuto? It's like, it, like, he doesn't matter. Like, most people do not care about Iba at all. But, like, just for the sake of OCD and completion, can we please, for the love of holiness and everything, and the love of Cone, the king of New York, just get the name of Iba's goddamn Zompocto. Please. It turns into, like, a scimitar with, like, a little pick protruding from it. It doesn't even look really all that cool, but can we get the name of that damn thing, for the love of God? So, I don't think it's going to be Iba's fight. Iba shows up at the very end of the fight with Komamura. He kind of like, you know, he kind of tells his captain that everything's okay. You you did the right thing. You know, don't feel bad about yourself. Don't don't feel like, you know, guilty or anything because of what you did. Um, that that was uh, that was Iba's, you know, involvement and, and purpose in that fight. So probably not going to be Iba. Squad 8, you know what's interesting? Shunsui and Nanao both moved to Squad 1. And then later, way later at the end of Bleach, we find out that Lisa Yodomar uh, Yadomaru or Yadomaru becomes the new captain of Squad 8. But for right now... Now, for all intents and purposes, they don't have a captain, they don't have a lieutenant, and it's wartime, so I'm thinking, just for the sake of the invasion of the Quincy's, just for this wartime provision, Squad 8 probably should just merge with Squad 1, because, you know, their captain's moving, their lieutenant left, I mean, uh, the, the uh, remaining guy is uh, Tetsu Fosa and Joji, I think the dude, that's the name of the dude, the third seed of Squad 8 that fought against Chad, Chad just like one shot at him back in the Soul Society, I guess he's in charge now. So, you know, just just merge Squad 8's, like, foot soldiers and seated officers with Squad 1. It'll be a mess, but, like, it's for the war right now. So, obviously, th that's what's probably going on there. Kensei fights against Mask. Shuhei's Bankai. That is something that, like... So, Shuhei is really, like, the Yamcha in this arc. Like, he really is. Like, every time he shows up, he gets beaten down by Driscoll. I think he gets beaten down by Maste Masculine. I'm not exactly 100% sure if Shuhei was involved in that fight, but I feel like he was. If he wasn't, eh, whatever. Um, he later shows up after he, he's being manipulated by Pepe Wakabrata, Sternritter L, the love. He, can, he gets manipulated there. And then he goes to the Soul Palace and gets shot by Lilia. Like, that's... Like, every single time Shuhei tries to do something in this arc, he gets taken out or one-shotted or, or something, right? And uh, it's sad because, like, Kubo really really wants to focus on him, but it's like, it's like this Yamcha paradox where Kubo's like, man, I really want to show off Shuhei's Bankai, but, eh, somebody has to get shot by Lilia, so I guess it's gonna be him. What if Kubo's just, like, rolling dice, or just like, alright, who's gonna get shot by Lilia? All right, okay, that's, uh, second in line, oh yeah, that's, um, uh, second in line, that's, uh, Shuhei. Sorry, Shuhei, wanted to show off your Bankai in the final battle, but, hey, the dice spoke, what are you gonna do? You know, so it's a thing at this point. Shuhei's Bankai, will it make an appearance in the final arc? I don't know, man. Do you know? Does this rhino up here know? 
I don't know. Do you? I don't know. Okay. So, yeah, Shuhei. Squad 10, we have Toshiro and Rangiku. They are heavily involved in the battle with Basby. That's going to be actually the first major fight that we're going to get in Core 2. And I'm really excited for that because that shows a tactical way of fighting, a way of fighting utilizing Toshiro's uh, Hyorimaru, the Shikai of Hyorimaru, the ice and the vacuum uh, blades and stuff like that, the vacuum ice wall, vacuum ice blade. Really cool ideas uh, involving science and, and whatnot from uh, Toshiro and Rangiku really thinking outside the box there. And so I'm uh, really excited and see what that fight's going to entail. Uh, Kempachi this entire time I feel is just off kind of training with Nozarashi to learn the name and of like the true Shikai that he has and everything. It takes him a little while to like gain the, the hang of that before he arrives in the battle. A little bit late to fight against Gremi, but he does show up. Yachiru's thing is of course dealing with Gwen L. Lee and alongside Asane. So that's her battle that we're going to get. Now Mayori and Nemu are an interesting one because they get a lot of fights compared to the other members of the Gotei 13. They get a they get like two major fights uh, throughout this arc. They get the fight with the zombies, and then they get the Mayori gets his fight with Pernida at the end when they go to the Varvelt. Okay, so um, I love Mayori's character and his fights. Well, I don't love what his character is, but the fights involving Mayori are always the most interesting battles in Bleach to me personally. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh man. And if Kubo wanted to throw a third Mayori Kuratsuchi battle in this arc, uh, I'm not going to say no to that. I'm not. But I, I, I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of other characters that should be focused on beyond Mayori, who already gets a decent amount of screen time in this arc. Um, when he pops out of his little room, though, he does face off against Askin, and Askin's just like, screw you, I'm not fighting you. You seem like you're going to be a problem. You're going to pull out a bunch of random, like, dirty tricks and tactics. I'm not dealing with that. I'm out of here. I'm going to go fight somebody easier or maybe go have a picnic somewhere that's asking style so i don't think the battle is going to be like in the in the anime it's like we're actually going to see the battle between askin and mayori don't think that's going to happen there mayori and nemu already do a decent amount of stuff in in this final arc compared to some other characters like shinji or shuhei or izuru so moving on to squad 13 we have jushiro and unfortunately, Jushiro, I went back and read just to see what he was up to. And yeah, he is in the shrine outside of the Seireite. He's not even in the Seireite when the uh, the Vondenreich invades. And it turns it into the Vonden Seireite. The Vondente, I believe I called it way back in the day. He's outside of the Seireite in the Rukon district going to the shrine to sort of pray to the Mimihage uh, in order to gain access to the ability of the right hand of the Soul King, okay? So Jushiro is there basically doing that ritual for the majority of this first invasion. He does show up later, uh, much, much later at this point. Yuha has already gone to the Soul Palace and everything is kind of crumbling apart. He, he does show up later and talk to Shunsui briefly and then we get the whole thing with the Mimihage uh, shortly thereafter that. So uh, yeah, Jushiro Uketake, it would be really cool to see him in a straight up fight but he is also going to be indisposed here. Um, Sentomaru and uh, Kione are also uh, Sentaru, not Sentomaru. Sentomaru is a, a One Piece character. Sentaru, there we go. Sentaru uh, Kotsubaki and uh, Kione Kotetsu are also with Uketake there. So those are the captains and lieutenants that we're working with and to see their involvement. So out of all of them, I would say Izuru, Shinji, Momo, and... Um, seeing a fight with Shuhei. So those those four are the big ones, okay? If we could see a fight with any of them all drawn out, like at least a whole episode, like get the Yamamoto versus Yuha treatment, that would be gold. That would be really good. Something else that I discovered while I was reading these chapters, rather interesting. So when Uryu goes to join the Vondenreich, and Yuha walks out. This is going to be, by the way, probably the first scene of episode uh, 14, when the Bleach anime comes back in July. This will most likely be the very first scene, the scene where Yuha assembles all of the Quincy's, not just the Stern Raider, but all of the Quincy in the Silburn together to form this big rally, and then he announces Uryu Ishida as his successor. And that causes a lot of discontent amongst the Quincy's. Because it's like this random dude that just showed up out of nowhere is now Yuha's successor. Not Hashwalth, not 
not any of the other Stern Ritters or any of the other high-ranking, you know, members of the Royal Guard or anything like that, like Lilia or, uh, you know, Harold Valkyrie or anything. It's it's actually just or Gerald Valkyrie. Okay, for some reason, everyone always brings this up. Like, why do you call him Harold Valkyrie? I'll tell you the reason. Because I think of it as Harold, like heralding in from heaven, okay? Not Harold is like, hey there, my name's Harold, which is also kind of like Gerald, like, hey there, my name's Gerald, you know? So just calling him Gerald is weird to me because that seems to be like the name of like some middle-aged you know salary man that's just like i'm working at my insurance office hi my name's gerald you know so it's like i think of harold as like he's heralding in from heaven because ah! he's like a valkyrie viking kind of dude but i understand his name's not actually that but it's what i've been calling him for years anyway none of them uryu ishida is the successor right and there's this whole line i think it's when hashwalth goes in to his uh, bed chambers, and we get that one Quincy woman that like has the uh, the black eyes that we never see again after that. So we have no idea who that woman was. But there's like like I guess Hashwolf's like personal assistant or his girlfriend or something. I don't know. But there's a woman there that seems you know genuinely concerned for Hashwolf's like well being. And she's like, aren't you upset that Yuha would select some random dude rather than you as his successor? And Hashwolf says, well, that's what his majesty did for a reason, because he knows that everybody is going to be paying attention to Uryu, which means that he can't do his own thing, because every single Sternritter is now going to be looking toward Uryu. They're going to be looking to see what kind of man he is, how strong he is, how he fights. All eyes are going to be on Uryu now to really display what he can. And everybody's talking about, oh man, what's Uryu going to be? And this, even Yuha announces it. You know, Uryu Ishida, this man is the last known Quincy. His abilities will be shown very clearly in the upcoming battle. Whoa, you know. So we don't really get to see Uryu fight. Uh, he shows up at the very, like, right when Yuha and Hashwalt are ascending to the Soul Palace, Uryu shows up. Most of the, a lot of the Stern Raiders are beaten down by that point, And he uses leaked Reagan to kind of attack Ichigo. There's that whole scene there. And then they ascend to the Soul Palace. But I was thinking, dude, wouldn't it be cool to establish Uryu's antithesis? a little bit earlier maybe hell for that reason how about establishing Hashwolf's balance a little bit earlier you know what I mean because those abilities don't get thrown around until once again one of the very very last scenes of this arc when we have Hashwolf fighting against Uryu and their abilities are kind of like mismatched against each other because it's just both of those abilities kind of involve bouncing damage back between one another you know it's just like you damage me and I cause the damage to go back on you with the antithesis and it's like well I use the balance to redistribute the damage so it's like back and forth, back and forth. It'd be cool to see Uryu actually fight against one of the soul, uh, soul Reapers, you know, to actually to give a little bit more weight to the idea that Uryu defected and he has to make himself appear as a member of the Vonenreich, as a proper Sternritter. So imagine this shit. Imagine Uryu awakens to A, the antithesis, invades the Soul Society along with all the other Quincy's, and he fights against Izuru, or he fights against Shinji, or he fights against Shuhei or something, right? And then maybe like Izuru and Shuhei, because they've met Uryu before, they were just being like, I mean, Shinji has as well, but you know what I mean, like, they've known him for longer, they, you know, Izuru shows up, or maybe Shuhei shows up, and Uryu's just there, and he's just like, um, yes, I'm fighting for the Vondenreich now, and they're like, no, Uryu, why would you do this, well, we have to fight, and then it's just like, boom, now we can get, oh my god, a really intense battle where we can display Uryu's abilities, how they work early on, how powerful they are, and how good he is, and plus, Uryu, in a arc, entirely based on Quincy's, by the way, does not really get to fight that often in this arc. So can we add an extra fight with Uryu? So far, the only one we have is the fight at the very, very beginning where Uryu fought against those hollows very quickly and didn't really do anything crazy. He just kind of shot his arrows a bunch of times, and that is all Uryu has done battle-wise so far, okay? And so he doesn't have a proper fight in this arc until literally, once again, like the last 10 chapters or so when he fights against Hashwolf. So can we have at least one more fight? with Uryu before then, I would like that. I'm sure you would all like that. So anyway, that was the video. Just me going through some options there for battle. I'd say Izuru, Shuhei, uh, Shinji, or Momo would be the prime candidates for these battles here. And then if we can also throw maybe Uryu as one of the Stern Raiders. As for the Stern Raiders side of things, Robert Akutron really doesn't get to do much. So even if we do Shinji versus Robert Akutron, screw it. Even if we do, like you know, Momo versus Robert Akutron. You know what? You know what? 
I'd be okay with that, actually. Momo Hinamori, extremely traumatized uh, individual fighting against the, the weatherman for Channel 6. I'd be okay with that. Weird matchup, but fine. More than what we got. All right, well, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. And once again, make sure to uh, go to the uh, iTunes store and check out the Bleach first-generation anime and the Thousand-Year Blood work for uh, digital download. So thanks for all that. Techie101, signing out. Later, everybody.